Mat Means Land is the latest film by Fox Maxi, Bayom Kawichum, and Kumeyai, a California-based filmmaker. With a background in fashion production, he directs, acts, and writes, and is the artist behind civic films. After several museum presentations in the USA, Mat Means Land will have its world festival premiere at IFFR and marks Fox Maxi's first appearance at the festival. Laura Ortman, White Mountain Apache, is a Brooklyn, New York-based composer, musician, and artist. She produces solo albums, live performances, and film art soundtracks, and frequently collaborates with artists in film, music, art, dance, multimedia, activism, and poetry. Tell me um, the title of your film, because uh, I would love to hear it straight from the mouth. Yeah, sure. It's it's called Mat means land, and Ma is a Kumiai word, and um, means land. So that's kind of the the place that I was coming from when I wanted to edit stuff and push it out during this quarantine moment. Aha! Uh-huh. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. Um... Uh, w- w- when was it shot? And uh, I read some about it, and I, um, I, I, uh, I was really, really curious about, uh, like, how long it took and um, your editing process and such. Yeah, um, I use footage from mainly from my phone, so it's like it's shot from the last like ten years, like all different time periods, all different locations too. And um, editing wise, I want to say it took like a month um, of like straight up quarantine frustration, just not really having an outlet or people that I felt comfortable talking to. So I feel like this film was very much like therapy, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. And so editing was very, it was very emotional and very like alone and just with me and my computer screen me being able to process stuff that way right it has a sense of um um, compactness um Mm -hmm. but it's also open at the same time which i thought was really um 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 it was very uh like therapeutic too for for the viewer you know because it kind of condenses all these ideas and it just opens it up um when, exactly when you're like um getting kind of getting lost in a meditative kind of trance mm-hmm. um, i like i like that idea of like meditative or like just anything kind of healing and and having that space because that's definitely the mindset that i was in when i made it so it's huh. good to hear that it, it comes across you know right and and, and um you know like like you're talking about kind of you know and the film addresses it too, how it kind of um, captures this essence of um, um, like, you know, darkness and, and isolation and, and, and mm-hmm. feeling down, you know, like, um, like mm-hmm. what happened and, and, and how it's just kind of balanced with the sense of, uh, of healing. Um, and um, it, 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 it just reminded me of like a like a collage you know before it's assembled and then that's just kind of having that, that forethought of of um how it come how it will come together without actually having the physical results so mm-hmm. yeah i'm curious about um uh, about uh how how um the the, the distance um and the aspects of way out west to the mm-hmm. east coast and stuff um do you have a sense of, of of how things tie together um with with the distance and and, and the memory and the um execution of yeah. being able to translate being out west and being out east and such yeah it's um it's cool because I guess as I was making the film, it was like one of the first times that I've actually lived back in my um, home space. I was in New York for almost 10 years 
and was very East Coast like dedicated like oh my god if you talk to my mans he will complain because i talk about new york like it's like the best thing ever and i'm so um loyal to that place and loyal to the east coast also because of how much time and how much like i learned over there um but to be back here i'm in la now but i was in san diego when i edited edited it and um, it was kind of cool because I'm processing like being home and what that means and I'm getting time to um, spend with my family like that's huge for me just not being so close to them for so long it's really a big deal to be able to like go hang out with my uncles whenever I feel like it and that was tied to so much of my comfort and healing too so it's like um, I see both places, definitely both both coasts as being super special and, and rooted in like beautiful memories and things for me. Um, but right now it's like I get to explore California um, in a whole different like adult mindset because growing up here, I hated it. I hated it. Like I hated the... Um, you're supposed to be right <laughs> yeah like it was just oh like I, I always wanted to live on the east coast when I was little because I would see it in movies and stuff and it just looked so cool and over here you know it's like there's just strip malls and like people wearing like sandals every day and it's like very casual and <laughs> I, I hated that growing up like I just wanted to be like dealing with snow and I don't know public transportation and stuff like that so yeah it's it's cool because the film naturally has these two locations and two very different um vibes to it I think yeah I appreciate that and uh, um I, I do a bunch of field recordings and such myself audio wise and collage things together um, incessantly and I um and and, and that having that um I don't know that that kind of um bowl of, of distance between here and there and um seeing how visually it kind of ties it together do you have any um um any ideas or uh, reactions or uh, thoughts about like the mid the midwest or the I'm yeah, sure. I, <laughs> I, um, I love it I mean I haven't spent too much time but I, I had a job like a couple years back where I was working for nonprofits and getting to um, travel to different reservations and film and so that was fun for me because I would get to go to like Wisconsin and the Dakotas and Ohio and Oklahoma and places that I never even had to visit because I would always take a plane to New York and stuff. And so this time we would be driving and I'll get to stop wherever we wanted. And, um, you know, I, I want to explore it more. Like it, it would be my goal, honestly, to just like travel North America for the rest of my life and just like film and meet new people. And I don't know, like yeah. set up a little yurt wherever I go or whatever the heck, a tent, I don't know. But um, it would be cool to live like that and to just really get to explore because that's the part that I think the Midwest has. Like it's, yeah. it seems more open than what I've seen on both coasts. Like there's a lot more space and kind of a lot less people. <laughs> um, so I, I think that would be cool. Yeah, that that um, that the 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 people that are in your film and stuff makes me so curious about, um, like th their story, um, mm -hmm. where where they are from, and and how to um, extract that information just guessing through all the the creative aspects of it. So it, it's really it's really cool that way because it just kind of keeps you guessing. Um, mm. And, um, you know, because I can tell there's like, you know, aspects of, you know, where you're 
from and, and <coughs> sun sunshiny, you know, Cappy and you know, huh. and, and um, that 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 FDNY, you know, um, um. Yeah, and stuff. I was like, whoa! <laughs> you know, the bird shit on the windows. I was like, I, I that's that was yeah. like, like me in my truck this morning. I was like, get off! Like, yeah. I'm driving here. Like, <laughs> so you know, there's all these like little touches of, of place and situations um, that, that I thought was really fascinating. Like, um, in your audio, I don't know if the audio came from your own um insertion or is it kind of or or like there's double layers of sounds and stuff which i love. yeah i mean i i've known about your work too for a minute so it's crazy like crazy to talk about audio with you you know what i mean because <laughs> like that's where i start off um every project i always start with the audio and i try to layer it and like basically fuck it up as much as I can with still keeping like the the idea of it or some of the words or some of the rhythm and then I edit to the audio like kind of like dancing or something like it's just totally off of like um what I feel from the the music or or even the um clips sometimes I have like clips of um Usually, usually native um, people talking in the past at like rallies or I don't know events or something. Like I don't really know too much about what where they're coming from in terms of that, like the event itself. But just to see it in the context of like a YouTube video is so interesting to me. And then to to have that freedom to use. Um, to use that past and that history um, and then kind of swirl it into an audio moment. Like, I think that's, that's something that I'm, I'm still working on because I don't know. It's, it's not, um, it's not as layered as I, I think it could be, you know what I mean? Like, I think I could probably work on the audio part for, forever and then i wouldn't even get to the video <laughs> i know I thought, like I, I think making an album is crazy but um to do to, to to be a filmmaker i'm like whoa you guys are serious <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's um it makes me think about um you know how this will be seen in rotterdam um mm. i um i've only been to Amsterdam, but I'm I'm curious how how you think this kind of information would speak to our audience way over there. Shit, I don't even know. Like I, that's why I'm shocked. You know, I'm shocked to to talk to the wonderful crew and and team that we have worked with for this because so far this is the best experience I've ever had with the film festival. Ah, oh, that's kick ass. And and that's cool because it's not even American. Like I don't know why that makes. I don't. It just stands out to me because I'm like, well, maybe they just get it more than people here. I don't know. It's it's interesting to me because I feel like immediately um, it was my film was received with like respect and and like not a lot of weird questions like i've gotten some weird oh, questions we're getting there we're getting there <laughs> yeah. so it's like um so it's just funny because i i would never expect rotterdam to be a film festival that would even like my work or be interested in my work but it, here we are and it's a big big ass deal for me to to the ideas of of working out um, things emotionally, like whether high or low, um, it, it's, it feels, um, it, it's like a, a very deep time to be concerned about mm -hmm. the emotions and, and how 
um, it, it just becomes like a balance at some point. And that, that, that feels like a reaching out that, that you're doing with your work. Um, you know, it gets all crazy and then it so suddenly starts to kind of calm down and then you start asking questions and or making statements about um, things that, that uh, need to be addressed. Um, uh, a, a nurturing sense um, and, and extroverted sense of putting these questions or statements into the visual and the audio. Yeah, I, I really focus heavily on emotions. Like, I've, I guess I've always been pretty emo and like just so uh, confused why um, the structure of my life can't be reflecting that if that makes sense. Like, especially when I lived in New York, I mean, there was, I worked in fashion in New York and that shit was not built for emotions or, or honesty, emotional honesty, I should say. Because if I was burning myself out or feeling depressed or um, just genuine, like normal things that people go through from time to time, um, there's no time for that or there's no room for that. And so I feel like for so long, I've been like really trained and taught to push uh, certain emotions and certain reactions away and to not like focus on that. Mm -hmm. But um, with with this time and, and especially with COVID and everything, I, I feel like there's nothing to lose now. There's a lot of footage in the film um, that refers to certain communities. Like I have um, some footage of going to Trump's wall, which is being built on Kumi Island in Southern California and Northern Mexico. Um, and that's, you know, specific to that area. But then I also have footage talking about or referencing um, firefighting in California, like the whole state and, you know, the history of how uh, we as native people to California would have cared for the land, which involves like um, cultural burning. I've heard people call it that. Um, and so that just means burning pieces of land on purpose. Um, to prevent these gigantic wildfires that break out at random. Um, that never happened when we were caring for our land. So um, I purposefully put in footage of firefighters in California to reference that, but then also to honor my family because um, my mom was a firefighter and a lot of my uncles are firefighters, my cousins are firefighters, so it, there's like a, a long history of working with fire um, in California. And I also have a um, footage of um, a Hawaiian woman, a native Hawaiian woman who speaks about her communities and the the struggles that I think a lot of people face when they're trying to speak up for their communities and also keep up the momentum within their communities to to stick together and kind of focus on the original goal which is to like care for our um, land the way that our traditional knowledge sets out for so it's um it's a lot it's a lot of different topics kind of melded in one and it's all very emotional as you know we talked about before because it's it's stuff that I get really pissed about and it's stuff that I also get heartbroken about and it's stuff that I feel is completely out of my control and just completely um I don't know how to say it but it's like it, it's almost like there aren't words in 
English or maybe any language to like describe the the sense of like loss and um, helplessness and and things like that to watch to watch these spaces be um, destroyed in such a way and like and have really have no disrespect or even I, I don't know my whole my whole thought process about um, activism and <sighs> the land protection and all this stuff has changed a lot especially since editing the film um mm -hmm. because as i was editing it i was going to the to the wall to the border um with my family and and really we were like <laughs> you know we were putting our our bodies on top of explosives we were um fighting with border patrol we were um, standing in front of uh, buildings in San Diego and downtown, and we, we had all these these plans and these um, actions, I guess they say. But the reality is, I just it it's beyond it's beyond that, you know, it's beyond what we could do because the wall is still being built. And um, regardless of all of our efforts and all of our awareness building and all the stupid Instagram posts and things like that, it's just not really, the, the heart of the issue is still not being addressed. And like, that's the part that I hope to kind of jab at in the film is that even with all this work, like I could, I could take off, I could never work a real job again and just focus my life on activism and protecting land and da da da. That's what I thought I was gonna do for a long time, but once I actually put that into practice and um, even to come home to my own community and and try to launch this movement at the border. Uh, it was hard because I don't, you know, I don't know how your community is back home, but I'm a new face to a lot of people because I was adopted and I didn't grow up, you know, I didn't stick around San Diego. I moved and then to, for me to come back, I'm a new face. So they don't, a lot of people don't trust me. A lot of people um, don't respect me and don't like me straight up so um you huh. know I have yeah it, it's just like um it, it's just like you know we were doing a prayer one morning before an action and everybody in the whole group skipped me to smudge like I was the only person who who didn't get smudged and it's just like what the hell like I I've never experienced that even on different reservations where I don't even have blood ties to I've never experienced that um that level of like mistrust or that level of whatever that is I don't I don't know how to label it but I'm sorry to hear that uh, yeah <laughs> it's, it's a crazy um it's a great, it's very political, even in, even outside of like Democrat and Republican and whatever America or not America, it's very political within our, within my own community. So, um, well, th th there's, there's, um, there's a uh, time on your side. Um, mm -hmm. and the, the, the way you capture, um, the extension of, of your intentions, um, is is apparent in this work so there's there's time there's there's um it, it's not um it, it is it's where your emotions um are empowerment so mm. um, i'm really uh really uh excited to, to see where these you know, act, you know your activism and and the obstacles that you face. It's a uh, yeah, it's it's uh, dimensional, and it will always, you know, be be part of the struggle. So it, it sounds yeah. pretty pretty straight on. So um, to 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 keep it, um, 
you know, with your own touch is, is, is something that no one can touch. So mm-hmm. keep going. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and I just want to talk a little bit about the, like, um, the, cause I don't want to make it seem like, um, I, d- I don't approve of certain ways of doing things. And like with, you know, I'm, I'm telling the negative side of what I experienced, but there's so much positive, you know, to it too. And I think that it's great. Like, I love that there's a lot of people who are more invested in like, um, just protecting land and, and rights and things like that. I'm happy that there's people doing that and dedicating their time fully to that. I'm just saying that I'm stepping out of the game and focusing more on what I want to do just for me and and not really expecting like, I think that's where the film really helped me switch my mindset up because I was really hurt from that experience at the wall. And then to edit the film and edit the footage and, and realize like, okay, well, let's just take a step back and like look at the issue in a large scale way because one um we all knew like all of us knew that trump was going to build this wall like four years ago basically and so that's where the honesty part comes in and it's like well if we really wanted to oppose it then we should have started four years ago and we should like there's a lot of things that i think If at least if I had a say in it and if people would listen to my voice, then I would have been like, okay, well, we should have organized and had this whole thing going four years ago or over that, you know, because it's like it's already being built. There's nothing we could do as construction's coming. But when he was running his entire election platform off of building a wall, that's when we could have kicked in gear and been like, Hell no, this is Kumi Island. You're not coming over here. But so that's like, these are the things that I'm kind of slowly realizing is like to fight these big American systems that have way more money, way more power, way more like whatever, guns, equipment, all these things, people, bodies, like they have way more. It's the whole word activism or the whole like, I don't know, in my opinion, the whole game has to be changed drastically. Like the way that we operate has to be changed drastically. Because what I'm seeing is that we're running off of like 70s and 60s platforms of protection in like community organization, which is cool to take from the past and to learn from it. But there has to be some kind of innovation and some kind of like like if they're if they're if America is progressing and using these different technologies and new ways of thinking and organizing them, we have to do it too. Um, it can't just be like I don't know. And that, and that, like a lot of this stuff, I just learned so much from time at Standing Rock and time in New Mexico fighting like fracking and you know all these things that I think, and and just like protecting certain monuments and certain places for other tribes, you know, not my own homelands, but like other, other places, other, I don't know. It's just, it's been a cool opportunity that I've had to get to observe all these different movements and like be a part of it. So I try to not, minimize that but i also really would love to not be a part of it anymore (laughs) because it's just the only reason i was able to make this film is because i stepped away and because i focused on what i want to do with my life um and, and like the balance of like living for myself versus like living for a group of people that don't even want me around like you know what I mean? Like there's, it's, it's very tricky being involved with like native identity and politics and just, it's so layered, I think, 
Or, or what did you say? You said dimensional. It's a much better word. <laughs> yeah. I I um I, I can only imagine um the 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 emotions with um encompass with um the creative um aspects that, that you bring to your, your deep down intentions and I, I thank you for your work. It's been it's been really um fascinating and fun. Um um speaking with you Fox. And I, I wish you well. And I and we'll be looking for more and, and listening for more. And thank you for the time for for talking with me. Yeah. It means a lot. And I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate you even taking the time to watch. So thank you. <laughs>